Welcome to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. Prepare your heart for laughter and tears as we share the unpolished stories of the homeless and hurting, hope and transformation. Here is your host, director of the Union Gospel Mission, Pastor Tim Lane. I am certainly glad that you guys have decided to join myself and my guests today on the radio show. <clears throat> I've got Frank Haney with me today, and he's got a fascinating story, but it's not a story. It's it's the truth. It is something that so many of us never have to deal with. At least we don't think we do. We see the people around us. We see people that go to prison. We see people out on the street. We see people that are robbing banks or they're holding up liquor stores, they're selling drugs, they're doing drugs. And we think to ourselves, well, okay, that's not me. Well, guess what? I tell these guys all the time, when you're going to give me your testimony, don't tell me how bad you were. Yeah. I get it. You were bad. And I said, let me tell you how bad I was. Let me give you my whole history of how bad I was. I was bad enough to go to hell. And that's all the bad we need to know about. Now, let's talk about the goodness of God. And so if I have any encouragement for any of you out there today, my encouragement is that no matter where you've been, what you've done, that we have a risen Savior, that when you hear his voice and you feel his call, you respond today while today is still today. And here's the other part of the encouragement. If you're living in a big penthouse, if you have lots of money, you're driving a beautiful car, you've got everything that life has to offer. If you don't know Jesus, you think you have everything, but you have nothing. You have nothing until the risen Lord of glory has snatched you from, from eternal death to everlasting life. And so today I have my friend Frank, who graduated the program, and yes, he's going to tell you a little bit about uh, where he came from and what he did, but suffice it to say that he was at one time bad enough to go to hell too. And you might be impressed with all the places he's been, from prison to doing the drugs and all those kind of things, but guess what? There was a time when we were on the same plane going to the same place even though we might have had different points of origin, right? Amen. So, Franklin, uh, tell us a little bit. What what is your background? How did you how did you come to know this Christ? Well, uh, very long time ago, my dad tried to teach us, teach all us kids. Had four of us, um, brother, two sisters. He tried to teach us about the about God. Uh, I don't think he. None of us uh, really realized what was going to happen, what 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 God was, what Jesus was. So we didn't pay attention to him. Sure. Um, but when I turned fourteen, I ran away from home. Hmm? You you fourteen and you ran away from ran, home. Ran away from home. I didn't get back to start getting back to my dad until I was about forty something. Uh, but he did die knowing that I loved him. And so that said, like the pastor says, uh, you know, I was on the same plane. I just bought my ticket to a different place. That's right. Uh, but back in 2012, I came to know Christ. Uh, prior to that, you know, I knew of the Union Gospel Mission because I lived on the streets here in Sacramento. Uh, but I came to know Christ in 2012, and... I've been walking with him ever since. You know, you said something to me earlier that I think would be interesting for the folks to hear. You had said that when you got into jail and you spent two and a half years in county before you went to prison, correct? Yes, sir. And so you had said, and, and uh, I think that that's something we overlook sometimes. You saw guys coming into jail. Now they're scared. That's the first time maybe they've been busted and and they're, they know they're going to prison, and the first thing they do is reach for a Bible uh, and haul that out because they figure they're going to, you know, okay, God, save me from this, right? Yes. You saw that as hypocrisy and, and okay, God, so is that what's got to do? Yeah. But And that was your look. I, I relate that story a little bit because I like that. that okay. Was, um, let's 
We'll, we'll, I'll give a little background sure. information. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2000, 2011, I got arrested for a crime, a uh, very heinous crime. Um, a person died. And uh, in August of 2011, I went to jail. Well, during from August 2011 to April of 2012, I saw people coming in and they would grab the Bible and, and they would start reading it and praying it and being being all Christ and, and, and everything. And then they'd get out. And a couple of weeks later, they'd be right back in. Uh, <laughs> and I looked at that and I go, dude, if that's what Christianity is about, you know, God's no good and he's not listening to me anyway, you know, because he's not getting me out, you know. Of course, my crime was a little bit different, but... You know, uh, crime is crime. Though. Crime's crime. You know, we're all going to the same place. Um, but I got, I picked up the Bible. You know, prior to April. You know, a couple of months before, and uh, but in 2012, April, I gave my life to Christ, and uh, through uh, through another gentleman that uh, his name was Tineman, and he got me into the Bible. And we'd study together, and then we'd study with various groups that would come in. And uh, we got in an argument one time. Which well, I, but by then you're a Christian, so you didn't have an anger problem, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> no it's, oh, just because I'm a Christian don't mean I don't get mad. Yes, Dan, exactly. Don't get mad quick. Uh, but that said, you know, uh, I got mad at him for about two weeks, all we studied was stuff on forgiveness. All, yeah, yeah. all the people that came in to, to give us sermons was on forgiveness. And it's like, dude, I don't like God anymore, you know, because all he's doing is telling me to go over and ask for forgiveness. And I don't want to do that. <laughs> and I didn't want to, you know. But uh, it, it made me realize that God is real, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, his word is living and and active <laughs> and active and it causes you to 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 look at yourself yep and that that's the blessing that christ has given me through his word um uh, that's not the only time that that's happened you know another, no. that, another time i'm in prison now you know and i've been walking with the lord for a couple of years you know i've been doing good now wait a minute lord didn't you forget me here I yeah mean, you know, uh, well, no you know, I, I kind of, uh, before I went to uh, uh, prison, uh, my, my lawyer came down and gave me an ultimatum. He says, so well, they're offering you, offering you 16 years. And I go, no, you go back and tell them I'm not taking that. I don't have that long. And uh, so he went back and told them, and, you know, then they started talking life and a couple other things that, you know, we're not pleasant. No, no, it definitely wasn't pleasant. But uh, about two weeks before I went to prison, he came down and says, uh, they've offered you 15 years. And you've done two and a half, right? Yeah, I've already done two and a half. And I look at him and I go, can I have a day to think about it? You know, uh, because prior, prior. <laughs> I bet to, he was frustrated. Yeah, yeah, he was. But prior to that, when, when I had 16 years, I was cursing God. Yeah. No, I turned my back on God. I didn't pick up my Bible for two weeks. And it's like, so I asked him, can I have a day to, to, to think about it? And what I was doing is sure. I was going back to pray because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this was something. How we should face things. That's it, you know. And uh, he came back, you know, a couple of days later, and I go, all right, let's go up, take this 15. He says, they took it off the board. Mm. I said, but they are offering you 14. And I go, 14 years? Can I have another day? Maybe it'll be 13, <laughs> right? No. So 14, yeah. 14 years. And uh, I went back to my cell and thank God. Amen. You know, and two weeks after I was sentenced, I was gone. Uh, February 14th, I got to the prison that I was supposed to be at, uh, Avenal down in you know, they call it tell it all because there's a bunch of people telling on people down there. <laughs> uh, but I got there and uh, one of my uh, Christian brothers uh, saw me 
get upset at somebody. And he came over and told me, he says, you know, Frank, that wasn't very Christian. And of course, you took that perfectly as a believer. As, right? as a believer, yes, I took that the way it was supposed to be. <laughs> you know, come here, let me punch you in the nose. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And uh, but he gave me this piece of paper and says, you know, my next Bible study, I want you to have this memorized. And I looked at him like, I'm going to punch you in the nose, and <laughs> I don't have to do what you say. You don't have to boss me. You're not bossing <laughs> me. Yeah, you know, and but. That said, I opened it up, and you know, I'm not sure what day it was where we were going to have the, the Bible study that day or the next day, but I opened it up, and it was James, nine, oh, chapter one, verses nineteen and twenty. Mm-hmm. Wherefore, my beloved, yeah. let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. That's right. And every time I get angry now, which you know, I never do anymore. No, of course not. I think of those two verses because that's what my elder gave me. Yep. I am completely with you. I I sometimes have to remember that a kind word turneth away much wrath. And uh, sometimes you are completely surprised when you take that high road and not always, because sometimes uh, it'll be thrown back in your face. But look what our Savior did for us. Look what he took for us. And he wasn't guilty of anything. Yep. Did you do the rest of the 11 and a half year, uh, years hard, or did you? It did was you, soft. Huh? It was soft. You know, I was on a level two yard. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't hard time, you know. Uh Christ, I walk with Christ, so they, they, I didn't have any problems with anybody else, you know, it's the gang members or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I studied with God, I went to church, went to Bible studies, uh, crocheted, taught people to crochet, so we were all girls there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, saying that, uh, the first time that he told me that he crocheted, I thought he was kidding me. Uh, I don't know why I thought that, but uh, he crochets a lot. Uh, matter of fact, aren't you? Didn't somebody just recommend you put together blankets or something? Well, no, I, I, you know, one of my one of my my friends at the mission that um, one of the supervisors there just had a, a, a stint with his heart. Oh, and, was this a large man? Yeah, it was a very large man. Mm-hmm. And we, we both know him, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, Tim. Uh, Another Tim. Yeah, you know. Well, I'll give you the last name later. <laughs> and uh, but uh, I figured I would make him a blanket so that when he gets in his old dotage years, mm. that he'll be able to have him and his little puppy. He could sit on the front porch and mm-hmm. be warm together. So. Yeah. Well, that's very <laughs> kind of you. Well, you know. So I'm, what? You know, I know this is off topic, but. What made you get into crocheting? Uh, I've been crocheting for 40 plus years. Oh, so. so was it your mom or your grandma or somebody uh, got you into One of my, my ex-girlfriends. Ah. Yeah. So uh, she got me into in crocheting, cross-stitch. Uh, oh, very all nice. These, all these things um, work to give peace of mind. Well, you know, it keeps your hands busy, keeps your mind occupied when and, you're not reading or contemplating the Bible. I know. it's. Yeah. Uh, um, my wife went home to be with the Lord three years ago, but uh, she and her mom, her mom did that needlepoint stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, that thing where they put yarn through a, and make a picture out of it? I don't know what you call that. Uh, they call that needle point as oh, okay. Well. It's bigger, though. It's yeah. like, okay. You got a latch hook. Okay. Yeah. I am totally out of my element now. Well, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, but I'm you. with you, brother. I'll teach you later. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. I'll give you something to do in so your old So do you knit, knit too? Or? Uh, if you ever call it knitting, I'll cry. Well, no, I don't knit. I can't get the needles to work right. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me something. Uh, how did you find out about the mission? What? 
I mean, you didn't just you weren't in prison going. Yeah, I wonder if there's a place called the Union Gospel Mission. Well, no. Back in two back in 2011, prior to 2011, I knew of the mission. Um, I used to to run by it all the time. Uh, every once in a while, I'd stop in for the warming center. Every once in a while, I'd come in and have have uh, services and eat. So you'd uh, hear somebody giving yeah something you know, yeah yeah. I'm not real sure what it was because I was usually high. Yeah. No, uh, I get it. But um, that said, uh, you know, I knew it was here. Uh, February 13th of this year, uh, uh, no, not this year, last year, uh, 22, uh, I got out of prison. And I had to beat feet here. You know, uh, I had to get to the mission. I knew that. You know, because if I didn't get to the mission, I was going to relapse. Were you paroled out, or were you? Did you finish your time? I was paroled out. Okay. All right. So, I had to. I had to make it here because I knew that if I once I got here, there's a sign out front, the <laughs> red sign that says "Jesus saves." Yes, he does. And that cross kept me accountable. Christ kept me accountable. Mm-hmm. All right. But that, with that in my sight, you know, I I I kept Christ in my sight. Uh, even though everybody around me was doing dope. Mm-hmm. Um, 11 days later, I was in the program. Now, that said, on February 14th, I saw my parole officer, and they wanted me to go into a program right now. And I looked at him and I said, if it's not faith-based, I ain't going. Uh, that went over like a ton of lead with a couple of them. But my parole officer told me, go ahead and get into the Union Gospel Mission. That was the lady, right? Yes. That was yeah, Agent she Master. Was, she was very nice. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? Here's something you guys don't always want. A, a very close friend of mine was a parole officer. And what you don't understand is that, yes, maybe some parole officers get jaded, but some of them really care. She said to me about you, she said, I really want him to do well. I really think he can do it here. And uh, I was impressed with how kind she was yeah. uh, and sincere, and which doesn't mean she was a pushover. No. Uh, but she had her client's best or her parolee's best interest at heart. Yes, and that did. was encouraging to yeah. me. It was encouraging to me um, to find that, that somebody actually cared that's actually in charge of me, you know? Um, right. She she basically let me do what I said I was going to do to see if I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Now. Um, and wanted you to do well. Yeah. You know, she, she didn't give me any, um, you know, back flack or, or, you know, rub me the wrong way or I didn't rub her the wrong way. She asked me to do stuff. I I did it. Uh, every day off that I had from the kitchen, you know, I would call her and let her know that, hey, I'm on the move. I'm out here, you know, and I didn't have to do that. But it was something that I wanted her to know exactly what I was doing. Right. Because uh, that's something that's important. Um, because I was held accountable to her. She uh, would come down to the mission and tell me that, you know, I really like this place. It's peaceful. Um, I could walk down the stairs behind her. I could open doors for her. Mm -hmm. And uh, people would look at me or, or she would look at me and tell me, says, you know, I can't do this on the streets. Oh, yeah. You know, I said, but I feel comfortable here. And. I go, well, I thank you, but no, know, know this, you feel in Christ. She told me the same basic thing, that she appreciated the mission. She felt comfortable there, you know, uh, talked to her every time she came in to look at, you know, to talk to you. Uh, she, like I said, I know my friend, uh, I said he was a parole officer, he was a probation officer, but he was not an easy guy, but he really cared about the people. And if they worked with him, 
he would work with them and they'd That's find it. out they had a friend in him. That's it. You know, we're not going to go out chumming around, but he still cared. Yeah. If, however, you were going to try to pull stuff, eh, he probably wasn't the easiest guy. Yeah, you know, and uh, Miss Masters, same way. Uh, she, uh, you know, I, you know, it's about probably the best thing that ever happened to me was having her as a uh, parole officer. Uh, but for a whole year, I was on parole, and. Uh, February 13th of this year, I got off parole. February 15th, I found out that it was off parole. They could have let me know a couple days early. You well, know. you didn't, uh, and you didn't have to have any monitoring system on parole, right? No, no. So when you said that you called and let her know that you were going to be off campus, yeah, she wouldn't have known, right? No, she wouldn't have known if I was off campus. Right, or not. right. You know, she told me, well, you don't have to do that. I go, I do, you know, yeah. I want you to know what I'm doing and, you know, that's accountability. Yeah. You know, did you know that with the board of directors that I have, there's many things I do not need to tell them, but I tell them anyway, Yeah, because I've got nothing to hide, you know, uh, they said, well, that, but that's your prerogative to do. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt for you to know what I'm doing. That's right. That's right. right. You know, and, uh, that's the whole key right there. You've got to let people, you know, you, you don't have to, but like you said, everything's above board. Um, and I didn't have to tell her what I was doing, mm -hmm. but she appreciated me telling her what I was doing mm -hmm. because why? I don't know why. It's just, that's something I did. Well, because it shows integrity. It shows that you want to try to work. If I'm in her position and you're telling me things I don't have to know, yeah. then I'm starting to build a rapport and confidence with you. So, you yeah. know. See, and that's the same way we do with Christ. Uh, Amen. You know, we tell him everything, and yet we don't need to tell him because he already knows. Well, yes, and, and that's exactly correct. And he, our confidence comes when we see the goodness of God growing in us, Amen. even though he's not— he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to convince <laughs> us, right? We only have about a minute and a half left, but I'd like you to stay for one more show, okay. if you're willing to do that. And since you're riding with me, <laughs> <laughs> I probably should stay for the show. <laughs> probably, but yeah. well, but I wouldn't make you stay. You yeah, know that. Yeah, you know. Can I, can I get the handcuffs off now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the so, the big ball and chain, chain thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, is there anything of encouragement that you could say in these waning few seconds to the folks about maybe where they are? And we got one minute. Well, if you, if you claim to be a Christian, let everybody see it. Not only in deed and not only in word, yep. but in everything that you do. That is well put. Uh, theologically, let your orthodoxy follow by your orthopraxy. Yeah, yeah. So what you believe, walk in it. So uh, we're going to wrap up this segment of the show. I can't, ima I, can't, I can't tell you how appreciative I am of all of you out there and, and of men like uh, Frank here, too, that is willing to come on the show and share. So as always, my dear friends, until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. You've been listening to Voices from the Street, the radio ministry of the Sacramento Union Gospel Mission. If your heart's been touched and you want to know more about the work of the mission, log on to ugmsac.com ugmsac.com To donate clothing, food, time, or financial help, call 916-447-3268. 916-447-3268. Thank you so much for listening. Join us again next week at the same time for Voices from the Street.